This video is for educational purposes only. Only test your own hardware. Doing otherwise is illegal. Don't be a skid. What is going on, you guys? It is the Talking Sasquatch, and it's great to have you back. Now, I've been taking a little bit of a break over the past month. Actually, played a ton of Baldur's Gate 3. Absolutely awesome game. Takes a little bit of getting into, but once you got it, the game's awesome. But I randomly got a package one day, and it was a package I wasn't expecting. And even more exciting, it was a package from the one and only Just Call Me Coco. Now, for those of you who don't know, Just Call Me Coco is actually the creator of ESP32 Marauder. This is my V6 right here. Now, the ESP32 Marauder is a Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and GPS penetration testing tool, and it does a lot of really cool stuff. So when I opened up that package, I found the brand new ESP32 Marauder V7. Now, while this guy is a little bit smaller, it definitely does not take away from any of the functionality, and actually, it packs a better punch than the original. So today, we're gonna take a closer look at the V7, see what the differences are, and we're also gonna take it apart, take a look inside, and put a brand new case on it, because that's how we roll. So sit back, relax, and take a look, and another cool gadget. Let's get at it. So first of all, let me pretext everything. When we talk about hacking or penetration testing, we're doing it from the perspective of a white hat hacker. So what that means is that we're only testing devices that we either own personally or have express permission to use. And the reason why we do these things is first off to learn. It's really interesting to see how these things work and learning how to do it yourself is very empowering. Also, it's super good to know exactly what hackers can do so we know how to protect ourselves from those types of attacks. If you don't want your network to be susceptible to a deal DDoS attack, you have to make sure you have a router that's not susceptible to DDoS attacks. If you don't want your network to get hacked because somebody used a dictionary style attack on it, make sure your password's not in the dictionary. Honestly, the last thing that any of the cybersecurity creators that I know want to do is empower people to do things that are illegal, because that's just not cool. And that's not the intent of these videos. All right, so let's switch over to the top down camera and take a look at all the things that the ESP32 Marauder V7 can do. All right, so here we have the V6, the V7. Actually, we've also got the ESP32 Marauder Mini right here, which is pretty cool. Now, this is actually an older version. I actually got this from community member Lord Conda, and the new version actually has an external antenna and GPS. It has has all the same features as the bigger one, it's just a smaller form factor. So one of the interesting things to notice about the V7 is the fact that you actually pulled the joystick from the Mini and used it on the larger one right here. Just kind of like AWOC's dual ESP Mini, he's got a joystick on there and there's no more touch screen, which actually makes it a little bit easier to use, especially if you're wearing gloves. Now you can see the size is dramatically different. This is a big boy. It's a pretty big device and you know, it's not that bad to carry around, but again, it's pretty big and it's not super what I'd call pocket sized. Now, now when we compare that to the new V7, this guy is pocket size, you can carry it around, it's super easy to use. And hey, if you actually want to make cool devices like this to yourself, well that brings us to today's sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay is your one-stop shop if you want to make any sort of cool device on your own. They will help you design and print a PCB to whatever standard you want. They're absolutely awesome and they have engineers on board willing to help you every step of the way. And they don't just do PCBs, they use 3D print, CNC, sheet metal fabrication and more. Don't forget to hit up the module shop they've got a ton of cool gadgets and parts of gadgets and screens and tools and everything thank you so much to pcbware for the continued support you guys are awesome let's get back at it so what does it do let's go through and check out all the cool things that this little guy's got to offer so if we go into wi-fi and i have a video that goes through exactly how to use everything in marauder so i'm just going to kind of show you what this does i'm not going to show you how to do anything so the first thing you'll notice are sniffers the sniffers are neat what this is going to go through and it's just going to sniff the wi-fi for all of the different things that you can sniff for basically probes beacons deauthentication packets and for those of you who don't know what deauthentication packets are a deauthentication packet basically asks a device to jump off of the wi-fi and reconnect the reason why you do that is that every single time that a device connects to Wi-Fi, it sends handshake packets to and from the router. If you can intercept those packets, you can actually decrypt the Wi-Fi password using a dictionary attack. That's why, again, it's super, super important that you have a good password. If you have a 16 character password, it's not going to be in a dictionary and it's going to be almost impossible to crack. So use good passwords. So yeah, we can sniff probe requests, beacons, the authentication packets, the EAPOL and PMKID. Those are the handshake packets. So we can just go and scan those right off the rip and see if anybody is sending those packets. We can also detect Ponegachi. So I have over here a fancy gachi and let's see if we can detect him. It may take a second because he's sleeping, but hello, friend. <laughs> There
There we go. So now we can see our Ponigachi right there. So if anybody got a Ponigachi, I'm going to find him with this guy. So let's go back and I'm not going to actually sniff anything because then I got to blur everything and that's annoying. And what we can also do is war driving. So what war driving is, is it simply means we're driving around or moving around or whatever. It doesn't really matter how you're moving, going around, sniffing for Wi-Fi hotspots, and then you're putting a GPS location to them. It's just something that people like to do. So let's get into the attacks and see what attacks are on this. So basically what this is going to do is there's a bunch of different beacon spams. What beacon spams are is it's going to send out a flood of access point names and it's just going to show up. One of the more funny ones or one of the more popular ones is in fact the Rickroll spam. And if I I highlight it you can't read it but the rick roll is just going to basically say the uh lyrics to rick astley's song never going to give you up and it's going to flood the entire list of wi-fi access point names it's really quite fun <laughs> um you've also got evil portal so evil portal is something you really want to watch out for this is why you never ever want to enter credentials into an unsecured wi-fi hotspot that you don't fully trust because what evil portal tries to do is trick you into entering credentials so again be incredibly careful anytime you're in public never enter any sensitive information into a Wi-Fi hotspot that you don't 100% trust, make sure it's HTTPS because again, the last thing in the world you want to do is accidentally give your credentials to somebody. Then you also have deauth flood and the deauth flood is going to send a ton of deauthentication packets to anything around and it's going to kick pretty much everyone off your network. That's why you want to make sure if you have things like security cameras, you want to make sure they are not susceptible to deauth attacks because that could potentially allow a bad actor to try to disable your cameras and that's really bad news. You can also clone an access point, and that means you'll just make a ton of copies of a known access point and just spam them all over the place. And then you can also deauth targeted device. So you could pick a single device and try to deauthenticate it. That's why, again, you want to be really careful that if you're using cameras, they're not susceptible to deauthentication attacks. So let's go back and see what else we got going on here. General, what's in general? I can't remember. Okay, so this just lets you clear your SSID list, clear the access points, clear the stations, basically just clears everything else. So let's go back because we have some more fun stuff in here too. We can go to Bluetooth. So Bluetooth has got a lot of fun stuff. So first of all, we have sniffers. So so this will just sniff any Bluetooth devices around. It'll sniff for, like again, literally anything. Keyboards, mice, headphones, anything that's Bluetooth. It'll even find a lot of cars. You can sniff for Flipper Zero. So if I do that right now, I've got my Flipper Zero up here. And yeah, there we go, we're alive, you can see them. So that's pretty fun. What else can we do? We can sniff for air tags. We can Bluetooth war drive as well. So it's the same thing as doing war driving with access points, but now you can do it with Bluetooth. Now here's a really, really cool, very useful uh, thing to do. I'm gonna move off of it so you can see it. Detect card skimmers. Now this is an extremely useful thing to be able to do. So that's why having a device that's this size that you can carry around is really nice because we all know that there are credit card skimmers out there in the world. and they are attached to credit card machines, and if you're not careful, you may actually scan your credit card on one of these and you can get your card stolen that way. Very, very important. So if you think that there is a credit card skimmer, you can use this device to detect it and save a bunch of people from you know bad actors. So it's a really, really cool feature. Let's go back and see what else we have. And then we can go to Bluetooth attacks. So Sour Apple is kind of interesting. So that's the first one here. Sour Apple has been patched. It was actually something we went over months and months, probably a year ago, but there was an iOS crash you could trigger with Bluetooth. And what was actually really cool about that is when we made uh, content about it, it with me and a bunch of other people, Apple patched it very quickly, even though they were told that this was an issue and they didn't fix it. It took cybersecurity content creators like myself and others to make more awareness of these things in order to get it fixed. So that's another reason why we make these kind of videos. So from there, we have Swift Pair Spam and Samsung Spam, Google Flipper. Basically, those all do the same thing. They're just targeting different devices. It's gonna send out Bluetooth packets and it's gonna ask your device to pair with it. So if you do that over and over and over again, it basically makes it so the devices don't work. It's not super terrible of an attack, but it's really freaking annoying. So don't do any of these attacks, it's super annoying. So let's go back. And then let's see what else we can do today. Oh, then we just have the device there. So this is a pretty quick overview of the V7. It's got really nice stuff on it. And we're going to take it apart because one thing we'll notice is this big old antenna right here. That's a big old GPS antenna, which means that this natively comes with GPS. The V6 over here, when I got it, I had to actually install a board from AWOC to make this have GPS. So this has native GPS. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take this apart and put a brand new case on it. So the first thing we're going to do is turn it off. And then we're going to go ahead and take some screws out. Actually, we should take the antennas off first. 
Now, one thing about GPS antennas is that this is like the Rolls Royce of GPS antennas. This guy, I don't know if you noticed, but it picked up signals. I almost never pick up GPS signals inside my house. This chonky boy is the best GPS antenna absolutely ever. And it comes stock. I didn't put those on here. Stock. Amazing. All right. So let's take some screws out. See if we can do it without dropping anything or messing up my camera. Screw, 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 screw. All right. Uh, well, let's put that there for the moment. So we've got a screen pull. I've been waiting to do this. I haven't taken this thing apart yet. Eh. There we go. Amazing screen pull. Here we go. We take this out. Awesome. So one of the cool things about this is this really cool little battery door inside there. So the battery sits in this recess and it clips in with this battery door right here. So that's very, very cool. Keeps the battery in place. We're not going to use any of this because, again, as I said before, we have a brand new shell. So here is the brand new shell I made. So it says Squatch V7 and it's pretty cool. It's got my spiral in it. I'm trying to see if I can get away with this overhang for the text, which clearly goes where the joystick goes. I may have to cut those letters off, but it looks so freaking cool. I don't want to do that. And then if we look at the back, we've got our brand new Marauder logo. Look at how freaking cool that is. It looks so great with this yellow. This yellow is also like super UV reactive. We've got the same purple for the text, Squatch V7. I love how this came out. Because you can see on the other one, this is what I did on the last one. We've got gold with a little bit of shadow there. And this is the old Marauder logo. This thing still looks sick. I mean, I, this looks amazing. I love the way this one came out. But, you know, we got a new one with smaller. So we're moving on up to the Squatch V7. So let's go ahead and put this together. So first thing I'm going to do actually is go, let's go ahead and pop this off. Let's see. Okay, cool. Didn't break it. I was a little concerned. And pop on our brand new joystick. Oh, shoot. This isn't the right joystick. Where did it go? One second. One eternity later. Found it. Actually dropped it. And I was somehow able to find this little teeny tiny guy. So let's pop that on. Hopefully it fits well enough. Uh oh. Oh, it's square. That's. Ah, God, this is going to be impossible. Ugh. Also notice this has USB-C, our Lord and Savior USB-C, the only way to go. I'm so glad that we have USB-C on pretty much anything that has USB-C. Are you in? Are we good? Nope. Are you going to go in or are you going to fight me? I think it's going to fight me. I might use the old one. Yeah, we'll use the old one for now. I'll print a new one. There we go. Oh yeah, it fits way better. I got to figure out my tolerances. So we'll open this guy up. I already got my switch in place. Take the battery door off. Insert our battery. Yeah, I'll put our battery back, battery door back on. Now I might tape this down afterwards, but you know, for the sake of the video, we'll keep it moving. But this battery door is awesome. I'm pretty sure that this was AWOC Dynamics doing, so great work on their AWOC. Very, very cool. Pop this in place, making sure that our switch is lined up. There we go. Switch is lined up and happy. Pop that down, make sure everything's seated. New front case. And with any luck, this all sits together and works. Aha! Got him. Got him. There we go. Screws back in. Let's give him the business. Love this little screwdriver. This is a Miniware. Uh, I can't remember the model of it, but yeah, Miniware electric screwdriver. A little pricey, but man, it's amazing. Give it a little extra. Now this is uh, PETG is what this is printed in. And it's a pretty hard material. So, you know, we got to give it a little bit of extra business on our end at the end of the screw, but that's fine. Brilliant. And then you can't really see. It's hard to read on this. It was way easier on the original case. This is the reason why you won't print things in um, transparent. You can clearly see GPS and Wi-Fi. On mine, it's a lot harder to read that. But again, we already know which one's which. So this is going to be our GPS. Screw her in. Wi-Fi. Screw it in. Hey, come back now. Brilliant. Look at how freaking cool this thing is now. Get it switched on. Hopefully I didn't break the switch. Didn't break the switch. Yeah, buddy. So now it can sit right next to its brother, the V6, and it looks really, really cool. I love these devices. Little stuff like this just makes me so happy, especially when you can print your own custom cases and stuff for it. But yeah, I love these little devices. They're so much fun. Same thing with the fancy gachi over there. Like just small little hacking tools like this. We learned a ton of stuff on how to work on Wi-Fi. And you know, it's just a great learning tool to learn how to do some really interesting things. So let's see, does the uh, joystick work? And eh. It doesn't really work. Bummer. 
So I'm just gonna have to cut the letter off on there. That's fine. It's 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 fine. It'll be fine. So yeah, that is the ESP32 Marauder V7 by Just Call Me Coco. Now these things are not in stock quite yet, but they will be pretty soon, and he restocks on the first and fifteenth of every month. You can find him over at JustCallMeCocoLLC.com. He's also got a bunch of other really cool stuff like the BFFB for Flipper Zero. Now, I made an entire video on the BFFB because, in my opinion, this is one of the most ridiculous, most fun Flipper Zero boards out there. So thanks again to Just Call Me Coco for hooking me up with this guy. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate every single one of you guys. It's great to be back. Don't worry about what's under that t-shirt, okay? We can, we're not talking about it. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe. The new meta is putting trending turns in the comments. So maybe TikTok ban, things like that in your comments. That would help tremendously. You guys are the greatest. We'll catch you next time.